What's up everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I'm just going to be showing you how to get a good sub bass for your song. It seems like a lot of people overcomplicate it, overthink it, and all that. It's pretty straightforward. So yeah, I'm going to make it in Citrus, but you can make it in pretty much any synthesizer. Uh, so first up, I've added a Citrus channel, and I'm going to load the default preset. Alright, so you have the sine wave, which is... There are a few different subs that I'm going to show you how to make, and the first one is just a uh, sine wave. So basically, all you really have to do is put the pitch of this down. So on the main panel, I'm going to drag the pitch slider all the way down. And in operator 1, I'm going to change the frequency ratio to 1. And I'm going to go ahead, and you don't have to do this, but it takes away some of the click when you um, first play the bass. I'm turning on the volume envelope of operator 1. And I'm just going to take the attack all the way over here, put the sustain all the way up, and delete the release. So you can hear I have a nice basic sub bass right there. And the key to getting it to sound good in your track is, you know, there's not really any mixing you can do to it. Uh, because if you EQ it, it's all you're going to be doing is changing the volume since it's only one tone. And uh, compression won't affect it either. It'll just adjust the volume because it's a, you know, it's a sine waveform. You can't really do too much to a sine waveform. So uh, the only compression and EQ that I would recommend is if you're side chaining it to your kick and EQing it so it fits with your kick better. But yeah, that's the basic sub bass. And that goes for distortion as well, because um, some sounds you might want to put a little distortion on, a little saturation, and it won't change the volume of the root tone, because uh, a sine wave is as loud as it can get. But what it will do is add harmonics, the same harmonics that would be in a square wave. So um, this is a very simple, fat sub bass. And if you want to make it a little bit more hard, like this one would be great for a trap or whatever, but if you want to make it a little bit more hard, you can add harmonics. And there are a few different ways, but my favorite way is to just go into the oscillator tab and uh, basically draw them in. So this is the first harmonic. I guess it's the third harmonic. This is the second harmonic, and this is the third one, because the root is the first one. And you can hear it's getting uh, kind of a harder sound with the extra harmonics. And if you want a little bit less of a hard sound, you can remove the second harmonic. And that's basically, these harmonics are the same as would be in a square wave. Another way of changing the harmonics is to change the waveform. And if you do that, you'll want to filter off some of the highs. So I'm just going to do that with a uh, parametric equalizer. You can do it in Citrus itself, but uh, it's a little bit more complex. You have to deal with all the routing, and I'm going to try to avoid that. So I'm just going to drag it down here. And, you, know, you can change to whatever waveform you like.
But yeah. Okay. And if you want to get a little bit of movement in your sub, uh, I'm just gonna do it with uh, a sine wave for now. So if you want a little bit of movement, which can be a really good effect, you can just turn on the unison, which adds more voices with a little bit of detune. And I recommend you turn the pan Maybe not all the way down. You could do it all the way down, but you know, just turn it very far down so that the bass still sits in the middle of your mix instead of kind of out to either side. Because that, that just helps you get a uh, powerful bass is if it's sitting in the middle rather than panned. So I'm gonna make, um, let's say five voices. Uh, I'm going to add some harmonics so it comes across better. I need to be an operator one. So you can hear that movement now. And if you change the pitch, the movement will change with it. And this gives you uh, basically kind of a re-space effect, uh, but it, it can definitely be very useful and yeah. Basically the more detuned you have, the faster the movement will be. Okay, now this sub bass, uh, compression, EQ, and distortion can all be pretty helpful in helping it sound bigger and fatter and all that. Because if you look at the volume meter, the decibel meter, you can see that it does change in volume as opposed to just the uh, basic sine wave. So yeah, those are the basics of how to get a good sub bass for your track. Thanks for watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch new videos as soon as I upload them. After that, check out the Beat School website. I'll have the link in the description. All my tutorials are organized on the site so that you can easily find what you need by browsing through the different categories. There are also a ton of awesome resources to help you in every aspect of music production. And if you want to help support me, you can buy any of my sample packs, preset packs, or project files for only $5 or less. This gets you some great sounds for a great price and allows me to spend more time making these tutorials and working on the website. Thanks again for watching my video and have a great day.